The Land of Cotton Candy Hair, illustrated by Alexandra Wood, written by Mackenzie Fraser. This book is dedicated to Jerome H. Thank you for the magical idea. As the sun danced across the sky, a small boy spotted something way up high. Something was shining over the hills, shining as bright as a rainbow. His eyes grew wide and he strained his vision, as he wondered what could be so vivid. Poppy? A small Bazi, his voice low. What is that fascinating distant glow? Paul looked down at his son's curious face. He paused for a moment and then did state. Tales abound about this faraway land, filled with folks with all colors of hair. The sun sunk low, turning the hills a soft gold, and the boy sat and pondered till the air grew cold. Poppy, can we please go see that land? The tall father smiled wryly as if he was hatching a plan. When morning arrived, little Bazzi awakened, but it wasn't to the regular sizzle of bacon. Get up, said Pa, giving his shoulders a shake. We have a long yet fantastic journey to take. The tall father and the small boy climbed into their apple green van, and their adventure to the land of colorful hair began. Hours had passed when at last they had arrived, and Bazzi's eyes darted from side to side. They were in a desert town of strange terrain, with cacti all around like giant candy canes. The people there were a strange sight. They had hair of all colors sparkling in the light. Pa's jaw dropped and out loud he shouted, The magnificence of their hair is truly undoubted. A purple-haired person approached the outsiders. They wore patched overalls and a smile even wider. Welcome to the land of cotton candy hair. I know we may seem strange, but please try not to stare. My name is Zen, they went on to explain. And if you left now, it would be a shame. Our cotton candy hair is our snack around noon, so I really do hope that your bellies have room. Bazzi was thrilled, his eyes filled with glee. Oh please, Poppy, can't we go see? Quick, quick, come join us, we're about to begin, said the purple-haired person with their marvelous grin. Pa nodded to Bazzi, but looked a bit wary. We may as well try this strange confectionery. The townspeople danced and looked very inspired, having brushed out their hair and cut off what they desired. Bazzi was shocked. They're going to eat their hair. Pa just laughed. What a curious affair. Their smiles were big and their bellies had swelled. They moved as if they were under a spell. Pa cleared his throat. <clears throat> May I try a sample? Zan replied with a laugh. Of course, we have ample. He seized it from Zan and took a big bite, and his eyes grew wide with instant delight. And me? asked Bazzi, filled with fascination. Why, yes, answered Zan without hesitation. They yanked out a clump for him to enjoy. Smell sweet and delicious, thought the small boy. Bazzi brought it to his lips, curious and eager. The smell of sugar was consuming. He had tasted nothing sweeter. The small boy smiled and his belly grew, and sure enough, he began to dance too. All of a sudden, Pa got an idea. How about a trade? You lack anything here? Zan looked puzzled. We're all quite content. Our hair's not for sale, if that's what you meant. Please wait, begged Pa. Here's ten dollars. I only want some, and we'll take any colors. Keep your money. We do not need that. Here's some more. Now enjoy your drive back. Pa and Bazzi thanked the purple-haired Zan and quickly skipped back to their apple green van. On their long drive home, Pa started to think. This could make us money, he said with a wink. Bazzi replied, It's delicious, however, it is the cotton candy lander's treasure. His tall father just laughed and scratched his chin. I bet I could strike a deal with them. I do not know, Pa. They seem rather happy, said Bazzi, who was now feeling less chatty. Maybe we just leave them be. Ah, but my boy, we could be rich, can't you see? The very next day, Pa drew up his plan. He would drive back and make a deal with Zan, and with him he'd bring some enjoyable treats, ice cream, some bonbons, and an assortment of sweets. Bazzi spoke up while his Pa checked his list. Do you think the cotton candy landers will lose their gift? No, my boy, they too will be rich. Don't you fuss. This plan of mine will be quite marvelous. Pa loaded the van with the sweet treats and ice cream, raspberry, rainbow, even coconut dream. By now, little Bazzi was feeling a bit weird, but back to the land of cotton candy they steered. The purple-haired person waved when they arrived. They called out to them, Hi, what a surprise! Well, now it's time that we surprise you. I have treats for you to try. Flavors brand new. Pa opened the back of his apple green van, and over to inspect came the purple-haired Zan. Zan reached for a spoon, 
took a bite of ice cream. They licked their lips and their eyes widened with glee. My golly, my goodness, this stuff is delightful. Something new, just as sweet. It's our hair's newest rival. Pa smiled and said, Great, I'm glad that you like it. Now I'd like to talk business, if you will permit. You keep all these treats and I take all the hair. We'll be a team. What do you think? Is that fair? The purple-haired person scratched their chin, but in little time they promptly gave in. Okay, why not? We can make a deal, but let the cotton candy landers have one last meal. The townspeople had begun to surround as Zan shared the news of what they had found. Once the cotton candy landers had their noontime feast, they collected all their hair and the deal was complete. Enjoy the cotton candy and we'll share all these treats, said Zan, as the tall father and the small boy loaded up their van. The cotton candy was purple, pink, green, and blue. It reached up to the roof and was tacky, like glue. Now, very happy, Bazzy and Pa drove away. They waved goodbye and said, see you another day. When they returned to their little town, Pa began yelling to all around, come, try this delight. All you need is one bite. People from all over the town came to purchase the candy in droves and it made Bazzy nervous. Where did you get this? People demanded. We need more cotton candy. We must have it. Pa said, aha, you like it. I'm glad to see. I will get more, but for a small fee. People began shouting and fighting for more and Bazzy was worried even more than before. A mob had formed, but Pa found it funny. Bazzy watched Pa stuff his pockets with money. Some days had gone by before they returned, and the town was silent, which was a concern. The town had lost its glow, and they weren't greeted like normal. No one seemed to stir, and Bazzy felt quite awful. Pa called out as he climbed out of their van. I'm here with treats. Hello, where are you, Zan? In the distance, he saw Zan, who seemed all out of sorts. Their cotton candy hair was thinner, paler, and still short. Their overalls were sagging off their scrawny little body, and their usually brilliant smile was looking rather foggy. Hi, they said weakly. I'm glad you are back. Because of these treats, there is much that we lack. I cannot deny that these treats are delicious, but now we're all sick, because for us, this is not nutritious. We're feeling sad. It was kind of you to share. It's getting so bad that we cannot regrow our hair. Oh no, cried Bazzy, feeling very wrong. I had a terrible feeling all along. The cotton candy is special, and selling it was a disgrace, and they were kind enough to share it with us in the first place. Pa had grown quiet and felt a bit uneasy. They were sick because of him, because he was so greedy. The small boy was thinking, a very big thought. He almost kept it to himself, but decided to not. The cotton candy landers are different, just like all people on earth. Our differences are our treasures. They're what give us all our worth. We can all learn and share with one another. Find out what makes us all unique, but we do not need to become a bother. On this, I think we can agree. I am proud of you, my son. You have been right all along. The cotton candy landers must be left alone so that they can grow back strong. The tall father then turned to his purple-haired friend and started to speak, hoping not to offend. I'm sorry, Zan, that I got a little wacky. I only want for you and yours to be healthy and happy. Zan, looking grateful, had shed a small tear. You're always welcome in the land of cotton candy hair. We do enjoy sharing above all ideas and laughter, and I do hope that we will remain friends from hereafter. Now, how about we have a quick snack before you and Bazzy have to head back? Thank you, but no, you have been the most kind. I think that I'll go without this time. Pa smiled at Bazzy, who gave him a knowing glance. Well, why don't we just have one last cheeky dance? After the dance on their way to the van, they spoke of much kindness all over the land. Bazzy's heart sparkled and his mind expanded. He was inspired and it felt fantastic. The End